Yay! Alright. Okay. Oh, get in the light. Maybe. There we go. Alright. It's got no artifacts to hell because of all the noise behind me. Um, today, I'm going to finish up making that Raspberry Pi case. I've got paint, soldering iron's hot, I've got coffee, and when I threw the last uh, Make It Live video up to YouTube, it got claimed as I was uploading it. So I figured if I'm going to put music in the background today, I might as well put on the Turrican 2 soundtrack, because that'll always get claimed. So I figured, why not? If it's going to get claimed, I might as well listen to, you know, stuff I like. Um, like I say, today I'm going to be soldering up the ground cables again that snapped when I was pushing the uh, Perspex together. And I'm going to be repainting it with the spray paint, but I'm not going to be spraying it. So I can do that fairly detailed as well with a paintbrush. Um, what else? No, that's about it. Alright, let's get started. Alright, so where we left off yesterday, the front panel of the arcade machines pipe. I might redo this binding or I might add another piece of binding. I'm not quite happy with the um, the finish on it. I don't know whether I'm going to repaint it, but I might just um, add uh, either a thicker binding or something else. Also, for some reason, I've now got a gap down here and I don't know why. So there's something making a bit of a an issue down there. But again, I'm not quite sure what that issue is, so I might just add a little bit more glue down there. You can't really see anything, it's all black. Um, but the, the light might bleed through. So I might just add a little bit of glue on a razor blade and just pinch. But I don't want to add too much pressure because like what happened yesterday, it just went pop and went flying. So, job today. Resolder these ground wires first. Then I have these like pint glass cups that you have for birthday parties and whatnot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get the spray paint here and I'll fax the video up. There you go. Uh, what I'm going to do is just spray into the cup, uh, making, you know, kids. This is very bad. Don't breathe this stuff in at all. I'm serious. It's not good. <laughs> right. So you spray in the cup and then making sure that you're wearing a mask, obviously. Um, I should get a mask. Um, you dip the paintbrush in, cheap makeup paintbrush in there, and then you can do touch-ups. You don't want to do too much because it will blob, but it's just to cover up the glue and everything else that I've got in there. Then what I'm going to do is get like a piece of cardboard or something to make a base and then put rubber feet on it to stop it falling over again and breaking again. And then the very final thing, I'm going to get a little bit of glue, a um, little bit more of the Loctite gel glue on a razor blade and just apply it underneath some of these transfers where it's like peeling off in the corners. Other than that, that's it really. So let's go. First things first, soldering. Now the problem I had yesterday was when I was pushing that piece of acrylic that snapped off, um, it uh, severed the ground cable. So what I've done is I've yanked out this yellow cable and I'll just have to snip here, snip there, and because it's ground you don't need to worry about anything, you just twine them together, add a little drop of solder, it'll be done in two seconds. Mm. I'm also considering, and this is something that was never part of the deal, was that I'm giving um, the... I keep saying... You know what? Yesterday I kept saying the lady that ordered this, the lady that ordered this. Her name's Emma. When Emma ordered this, or asked me to, she didn't even order it, it's not a client of mine, she's a friend. Um, when Emma asked me to do this, I uh, I said, yeah, and I said, get a controller. And I've got one of these controllers from the Pi Hut. But this keeps peeling off on my one. So I'm wondering whether to just do a custom one. Like, I don't know, maybe I'll just make a custom controller for her. I'm not quite sure. It'd be nice if I could just put one of these type of stickers because I've got a few spare just in that little gap and then obviously because of the residue like it's pretty sticky I can use a little bit of WD-40 this gets rid of pretty much any 
Most people use this as a lubricant. It's not actually a lubricant. What you, you can use this for, what you should really use it for, is for cleaning. Like, you don't really lubricate joints with it. You clean the joints with it and then add a lubricant to it. A lot of people just use this as a lubricant though, which you shouldn't really. But it's great for cleaning residue, sticky stuff, labels. Like I've had, um, I buy a lot of retro games. I mean, clearly. Um, and with my retro games, if there's a sticker on the box or a sticker on the um, manual or anything like that, a little bit di a little bit WD-40, if it's, especially if it's like shiny paper. If it's shiny paper, then you can um, just a little dab of this on some kitchen roll and just rub it and it won't remove the ink from the manual or the inlay. It'll actually just remove the adhesive. It's invaluable, this stuff. You just always have some. I know everyone that's sort of like into um, things like that always says, you know, do you have WD-40? Do you have gaffer tape? But, you know, they say that for a reason. It's true. So I might make a custom controller. I don't know whether I'll do that today, but not this one, because this one's old and ratty. This one's my one. The one that I'm actually going to give her is a spare one I've got. It's just in a box. But what I might do is remove the Pi Hut label and make a custom one. I don't know. Maybe extend the cable a little bit because it's got quite a short cable. So I can extend the USB on it a little bit. Anyway. Worry about that afterwards. Let's worry about this first. So you won't be able to see very well, but inside that switch. So this is now connected to this little DuPont cable here. And I have a blob of what looks like hot glue on here holding a solder joint and then i've got th i don't know how i can call myself even like on an amateur level that's bad so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to get rid of all of this by cutting here 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 twining them together little drop of solder that should complete the ground circuit so how close can i get this again because i don't want to snap all of this off i could and should have done all of this before um, gluing these back on yesterday, but it snapped after I put them on. <sighs> it's just the way it goes, okay? Mm. Also, I am very tired today. I've been up at 5 a.m. once again, and it didn't help that I was out all day yesterday. Because after I finished that live stream yesterday, I literally went from here to uh, my daughter had a job interview in Covent Garden, of all places. Um, she got the job, but Covent Garden, man. Not where I want to be when I've been up super early, like at five in the morning. All right, that is going to get lost inside, so I've got a. There we go. I'm out. Whoa, oh, don't get lost in there. There you go. God, that is absolutely disgusting. What was I doing? It looked like there was a third cable at some point. Did I connect something else to that ground cable? And then separate it out? You know what? I don't even remember. So now these wires are really short, and if I pull them too hard or try and strip the um, wire too much, I'm actually going to pull the switch off. And then if I pull the switch off, that's it. I've got to deconstruct everything again. And by deconstruct, I mean literally rip it, which I don't want to do. So here we go. What's the best way of doing this? Maybe if I hold, maybe if I hold the thing here and just tease the end with a razor blade. All right, try and keep it in there. It's just such a funny angle. So why pick the Turrican 2 soundtrack? Because Turrican 2 has the best music in any video game ever made. And Chris Holsbeck is an absolute genius. That's coming from someone who, ouch. Sugar, that went straight through. Well, I've got even less now.
please? Please come off? What is still stuck on? Oh, it's on that side. Alright, um... What type of signature is on this? Come on. Please, 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 come on. Is this one connected to a... This one isn't even connected to... Oh, my God. Right. Yank it. I thought this was connected to that micro switch. It's not. Idiot. Right. I was desperately trying not to pull off the micro switch. It's not even connected to one. That's connected to... That must be connected to the negative uh, pole on the LEDs. Absolute wally. Right, this is the one where I need to be careful. God damn, I could have done that in like 30 seconds. Alright, let's have a quick look at this one because I definitely do not want to muff this one up. Okay. And this one looks like it could be important, this one. Or is it? I mean... If it's connected, if it's connected to a um, a ground, then this one must be for the bulb. So I mean, it doesn't really matter if I can't get it working. It's just not. It was like an added bonus, but it'd be nice if I could get it working. Mm. Okay. I just wish I had more room to maneuver in there. All right. Come on. How do you strip a wire that's buried in something? <laughs> uh. God damn, the Tarakin 2 soundtrack was so good. Like, it really is just a masterpiece. If you've never played Tarakin 2, Tarakin 2 is a weird game. It's basically... Like, in the States, Nintendo had like a chokehold when the, uh, the original Nintendo was out. And um, that was all that was there because of the crash of the, uh, what is it, the 1982 video game crash. Because of that, there you didn't have many options for video games. And Nintendo came along and basically sold, like, got that market sewn up, right? Whereas there was no crash in Europe because we had microcomputers. So in the States, you had a, uh, basically a generation of people waiting for Nintendo to bless them with the next game from, you know, whatever studio, whether it be Capcom or Konami or whatever. And in Europe, we didn't have that. We were just like, well, we'll make it ourselves. All right, we ain't gonna wait. We'll just make it ourselves for the Spectrum and the Amiga and the Commodore 64 and whatnot. Um, even though the Commodore and whatnot was an American machine, it, it's, you know, adopted home is the UK in Germany. So, uh, Turrican is basically a mix of Contra, Metroid, R-Type, uh, what else is it a mix of? What had big bosses pre-Contra? Castlevania to a certain extent. Um... It's just, yeah, it's just an interesting concept for a game. Alright, that's one side done. Let's do the other side. I don't need way more than that, I know. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Yeah, if you ever get a chance and you want to look up a genuine... Because, like, there's a lot of video game soundtracks that get credit. And, you know, fair play... Fair play to them, like, I am a new Castlevania fan. I absolutely love Castlevania. Never grew up with it. Discovered it last year. Played pretty much all of them now. And the music, god damn, that music is excellent. But Chris Halsbeck, like, this mad German guy who created some absolute bangers on a machine that was, you know, capable of knocking out bangers. But he, really did 
um, the business, what you would do. I saw um, there's a YouTuber called um, Kim Justice, and what she did was she interviewed him basically at home on Skype, and he was saying how he took um, the Amiga had like various drum tracks, and he would take uh, like the four drum tracks, combine them into one track, and the remaining three drum tracks he would use for like synths and stuff. Genuinely, the guy's a genuine genius. All right, here we go. <sighs> Okay, here we go. Where's that? So I just need to twine that to that. And then... I can call that a day. Alright. Hey, oh, has that actually split? Oh, I don't think that's connected. I think that's separated. As I touched it, I felt it move. Oh, mm. no. Okay. You know what? I'll tell you what, I'm just going to tap a little bit of... I mean, it's not pretty, but it should be grounded now. That should be grounded. I mean, unfortunately, there's only one way to test it. Okay. Now, do I want to dab a little bit of glue in there before I test it or after? Hmm. I am going to test it first. Yeah, that seems like the way to go. Okay. Right, what this thing is doing now, I'm just going to sit down here so you can see me and hear me. What this thing is doing now, because it was, um, I don't know, dropped or I've removed the SD card, it's basically got to check all the files on the SD card, which can take a few minutes. But it seems to work. Um, I'm quite happy with the way it is. Hopefully it doesn't crash and error out. Where are we now? We're at 61%. Hopefully it doesn't crash and error out. But, um, yeah, let's go over there and have a look. And then all we need to do is the paint. All right, so where are we? Oh, here we go. Intro scene. Let's pull this curtain shut. This is what happens when you turn it on. Ta-da! And I don't know if you can see. Oh, look. The purple Petty Muncher. Press start. Credit one. All right. So down here, you can see, every time it accesses the SD card, that's a bit close, isn't it? <laughs> it flashes yellow. So, what about the other buttons? Well, this one should... This might turn it off, I can't remember which one's which. I think this one's the light. Okay. There you go. <gasps> Look how bright that thing is! There's no point to it whatsoever. Oh, the camera's not picking it up. Alright, so the other one's the shutdown button. And the marquee, in fact, let me just turn these lights off. The marquee should shine bright or shine at least let's see how badly did it break when i dropped it hey that's not bad actually that's not bad at all it looks like it's grounded pretty well yeah that's not bad so the the, the buttons might need a little drop of solder but as you can see oh it's a shame i can't start a game because i haven't got a controller to hand should I start a game? Yeah, you know what? Let's start a game. Right, so we're in. So what I've done is I've plugged the, you can see it's kind of tilted over to the side, USB's in the side. 
Still flashing away. What should we play? Let's play. Uh, let's play something that will wind up Nintendo. Um, what can we play that will wind up Nintendo proper? Uh, what did they just put on the eShop? It was something ridiculous, like ice hockey, wasn't it? Like who cares about ice hockey? Um, oh, they just put the Adventures of Lolo on there, didn't they? The Adventures of Lolo. There we go. That's on there. That'll wind them up. So we got all the custom box art, we got everything else. I need to change the background. I don't know why it's gone back to the default um, background. There we go. How Labs. Whoa, that's loud. <laughs> anyway, that is the adventures of Lolo. All right, so let's press this button down here and see if that powers it off. Hopefully it does. No, that seems like it's shorted. I need to turn this TV down, goodness me. All right, so that seems like it's shorted. But this one is up and running. But this one runs the script, unless the script's broken. Hmm. I wonder, is it the script that's broken or is it the, is it the button? I'm not really going to have a no, uh, no until I have a look in there. I mean, that seems to be on the backlight, the insert coin light works and that works. So why is the, is it this? Is it? No, it's not that. It's definitely not that. So why is this not working? All right, well, I'm gonna to have to do something you should never do and unplug it. Sorry, that felt really bad. All right, so what I've got to do is test the electrics inside or the, you know, not the electrics, the circuits inside and find out why that is not connecting so the USB seems to be working there and that light definitely does work. So what, it, ah, yep, yeah, I see the issue. That has come off. Right, yeah, that's, that's not good. What I'm gonna do, all right, so I'm gonna need to heat up the solder nine again. So yeah, I mean, you saw the way it came on. I don't know why it went back to that default. It shouldn't have gone back to the default. There you go. Definitely should not have gone back to that default thing. I might put a Game of Thrones, um, might put a Game of Thrones thing on there. Although that might have soured now. Like Game of Thrones is not exactly flavor of the month, is it? It was flavor of maybe last month, but definitely not flavor of this month. Oh man, that is a mess in there. Yeah, that's a mess. Still, this works. That's what I'm aiming for. Does it work? Yes, no. Yes, great. Move on. It might not be the best looking, you know, solder job out there, but I'm planning on covering it with a with a black piece of like cardboard or something. And then putting rubber feet on it so it doesn't slide over the place. Plus all these little white marks down here are all gonna be hand painted in a minute. I've got time. Yeah, I've got time. Alright. Yeah, that'll work. All right, what I need to do then is tuck this one out of the way. You go under there, mate. Let's just poke. I should really do this on camera, shouldn't I? After I moved you over to my uh, TV. And this, by the way, the, the setup I use over there, where you saw like the TV and like the HDMI cables and there's like the PlayStation, you know, uh, legacy underneath. That's how I do all my live streaming. Like, I know a load of live streamers, you see, they sit in front of a computer with a headset on and and a camera in their face and a big microphone. Like, I have a microphone, that's it. I play the, um, I play the game sitting on my sofa. No headset, no, you know, nothing. I play these games like they were meant to be played on a sofa with a controller. You know what I mean? I'm not into... Like, I, I'm, again, no problem with people who PC emulate. A-okay with me, you do you, God bless you. But at the same time, 
that ain't me. I just wanna, I just wanna sit with a controller in my hand and a coffee in the other, and go to town on a console game. It's all about like the aesthetics for me, the sofa. Even when things are going badly in a game and you shout and swear at it, you have somewhere to throw your controller because you're on a sofa. This is the only reason I'm doing this with the electrical table is just to tidy it up. There's no other reason. Just so it looks a bit cleaner. There we go. Right, so that's now out of the way. Oh. Okay, that's not the finesse that I was, you know, maybe aiming for. Obviously, if this breaks, if this breaks the micro switch out again, you'll have the uh, privilege of watching a 37 year old man cry. Right, all of this does, this doesn't actually carry a current. All this wire does is bridge two pins on the GPIO. And let's do that down here. All this does is bridge two pins on the GPIO. So there's no positive and there's no negative. All it is is connecting GPIO pin like one to GPIO pin three, I think, no. It connects GPIO pin 39 to GPIO pin 40. And when it bridges the two, it runs a script. That's all it does. So I don't really need to worry about positive and negative as such. Okay, ooh. All right, I need to make sure that this is not going to go anywhere without scratching the paint. Again, if it wasn't for, <laughs> if it wasn't for the, like, the paint job, this would be done in minutes. This is like a couple of minutes max. But because I don't want to scratch the already battered paint job, which again, I don't suppose it matters because it's already bad, but there you go. There we go. June. Bad the boy. All right, here we go. Nothing says amateur electronics like a face full of solder smoke, or flux smoke. How did that go? All right, let's let's try again. Let's get a little bit more in there. Yeah, that looks all right. All right, let's see if that actually stuck. <laughs> Please, one, two, three. Yeah, right, that's stuck. Good. Why do I always do this to myself? I should have stripped it before I soldered it with like micro surgery. Ooh. Now, if again, if it pulls off on the micro switch, I'm screwed. Yeah, not everyone has wire strippers. Not everyone has, you know, stuff like this to hand, especially in the pound shop, which is where all this stuff comes from. Okay, hopefully I can do this with my fingers because doing it with those pliers last time was an absolute nightmare. I realize you can't see much at the minute, but trust me, it's all going very, very well. I'm all, you know, I'm, I'm in control and I'm doing this first time. I'm definitely not fumbling around like I don't know what I'm doing. All right. Would it be easier just to hurt the machine rather than my fingers? Maybe. And again, this is a switch, not power. So it really doesn't, yeah, you know what, I'm gonna just turn the machine. Pinch hard and turn. So it really doesn't need to be perfect because I'm not carrying any current you can't short on anything that is the ugliest thing I've ever done but it works like the the joystick like this joystick switch the underside of it is utterly disgusting but it works all right last solder joint hopefully just gonna just literally pop a little bit of, is it still on yeah pop a little bit of solder on it that's not a good sign is it is the soldering line still on? And then he blows on the soldering iron instead of the joint because he's tired and needs more coffee. 
There we go. There we go. All right, I'm just going to use a little bit of electrical tape and a pair of tweezers. And just stick it on the side there to get it out of the way in case I need to have a quick peek. Okay, so that should be all my soldering done. Let's test it again. So hopefully, all right, hopefully that should be done. Now this was the off position, wasn't it? Um, plug you and you are coming with me, mate. All right. Oh, did it die? What happened there? What happened there? Okay, did we lose power? No, power's still on. Right, what happened? Let's turn it on. Anything? No, that's weird. It was on and then it just died. We still got power to here? Yeah, we still got power in there. Hmm. Let's unplug the power. Oh, hopefully I didn't corrupt the memory card because that's going to be an all dayer. Oh, I can't do this with one hand. Right, I'm putting you down. Hang on. Let's plug it back in. All right, so we're back on. And we've got power. And it's rolling the intro. And it's flashing away quite nicely. And I've got sound. And then it shuts down. <gasps> Hmm. Interesting. I wonder if it's this. Hmm. I wonder if it's that. Let's have a look. It's going to come to the point where I just run out of time. But... Hopefully I can get this done. <clears throat> this is the kind of process I go through. So what's shorting out? What is shorting out? Does it not look good? Is that actually connected? Let's have a quick look. It's definitely connected. That's definitely connected. It definitely goes to there. Hmm. That seems to be connected. Hmm. That's weird. Ah, right. I may have put it to the open. Yeah, it needs to go to the other leg. Right, okay. That's not an issue. What's the best way of doing this? Do I just desolder it? Uh, is it still plugged in? Yes. Right, do I just desolder it? Probably, right? That's like... That would be the way to go. So I've soaked, I've soldered it to the always on connection, which I did not want to do. It looked good from the thing. I can't really see in there. I've got my glasses on, but I've got no light. So I just assumed it came off that one. All right, come on, off you get. Desolder. All right, so let's have a quick look. Where do I want it to go? I want it to go on that side, don't I? Okay. So let's bend that leg out of the way. Oh my goodness, I wish I had studied this in school. Last one. Getting big boys. That's better. There you go. Right. Make myself a little plug and a socket. which fits in perfectly. It will drop a solder and we are good to go. Now, unfortunately, what I don't want to do is Oh, again, I blew the soldering iron, not the joint. 
Okay. Let's stick this piece here back. Right, stick that back to that inside wall. To that inside, to that, to that inside wall. Don't do it, don't do it. You can be calm, be calm. You're a, a leaf lying in the wind. A wind of misery where things fall on the floor and smash. Right, let's try that. You know what, I'm gonna try this off camera, make sure it actually works first before I move you. And then we'll try it again. 